Hi, I'm Rock and Well, also known as Chris Pineapple. I'm an animated music producer from Hawaii, and I'll be doing a live interview with Stephen Kuoko on 98.5. Tune in to hear my story. Aloha. We don't play the social game. We are social. Power 98.5. You're listening to Power 98.5, powered by United Angels Dream, your number one resource for public relations, entertainment, and multimedia. Contact them today at unitedangelsdream.com. Prepare yourself. Okay, let's go. Hi, this is Dan Aykroyd. He's progressive. He's beautiful. He's thoughtful. He's intelligent. He's powerful. He's positive. He is Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. Empowering listeners from the U.S. to the U.K. Live on air with Stephen Cuoco. Cadaver by Chris Pineapple, better known as Rock'em Well. How are you, Chris? Hey. Hi, Steven. How you doing, man? <laughs> what energy. I'm going to tell you. We were talking before we went live, and I'm like looking at the time, and we usually come on about a minute or two after, and I'm like, I was just feeling your energy, and I was like, wait, we got to go live. I could just have kept talking to you without a pause. And I'm telling you, this track, Abracadabra, even as I'm listening to it now, it reminds me of Back to the Future, Mr. Marty McFly. I'm telling you, Chris, oh. you are one talented producer, artist. Your music can be in like Coca-Cola, Pepsi placements. Like you are one of the top, most brilliant, no bullshit, talented artists hailing from Hawaii. And I'm telling you, you've got a super, super career ahead of you. And we've got, you've got to get more. I can't do it for you. I was going to say we published music out there. Cause this is incredible. Yeah. Oh, thanks man. Um, yeah, right now I'm kind of doing everything myself. Um, uh, I just kind of a, a guy, a, a music artist out here in Hawaii, a 3d animator born and raised in Honolulu. Um, but it, it's a Motown song right now. And I, I think it just matches the the spirit of, of today. You asked me when I wanted to do it and the interview and of uh, Valentine's Day was definitely the vibe. I always wanted to, to do some sort of special release for Abracadabra. And uh, I couldn't think of a more perfect way to do it or a more perfect person to, to kind of re re-promote it. So thank you, man. Thanks for having me on this show. I'm, I'm, I'm crazy excited. <laughs> thank you. And let me tell you, we're going to take a, a break in a little while. We're going to do a full release drop, live drop of Abracadabra by Rock and Well, all the way from Hawaii. So it's 12, 12 09 PM, his time, five o'clock Eastern standard time, New York time here right now. Uh, I also want to do a live music drop of follow me because that's something fresh and brand new that you recently had come out with. Mm -hmm. Would you like to take us through the process of 
each song, where does this inspiration, this creativity come from? And the the flawlessness, the the seamlessness, the perfectionist <laughs> of of this. Because would you consider yourself a perfectionist? Uh yes, too much. And and honestly, it, it's held. It, it kind of holds uh, creatives back. And I'm I'm learning to just kind of let it go. And um, you know, it in my head, uh, I always I always say like humans can. We there's only so many human hours that that we get in this lifetime so being a perfectionist i want to do so many things just like you man um we, we got to kind of let that go but yeah if, if you think the song is flawless thank you so much that's the biggest compliment ever we i definitely slave away at every single little detail um but yeah i i can talk about the track so abracadabra was actually it, it was a kind of strange release to me because I was already working on, on a couple albums, which are actually not Motown. It, I was working on a couple of hip hop albums, uh, a country album and an EDM album. And I, one day I, I was just in the shower. I, I was taking a break from the hip hop stuff. I was just taking a shower and uh, actually I'm going to skip around. I'm so sorry. So during this time that I wrote Abracadabra, I was uh, a working DJ and I was doing a lot of weddings during that time. And so I was just kind of listening to a lot of Frankie Valley, Four Seasons, that kind of stuff, Elvis. Um, it was just kind of in my brain. And, and one day I was just in the shower and I just kind of had this tune and like, I take it off back, girl. And I like instantly, I like stopped showering, like mid shower. And then I went into the studio and, and just kind of like did like this mock version of it. And I, I made the song in a day basically. And I, I put it out. It was the first song I put out uh, on like on any sort of like real platform that wasn't like SoundCloud or, or on a USB drive to my friends. And I just put it out there and and people really liked it. And I, it, it just kind of became this this weird little little thing in, in the in the local community in Hawaii. And I would always finish my DJ uh, sets uh, with abracadabra and and people just loved it and coming from Hawaii uh, people always come here for for like weddings and whatnot and just so happens it, it was kind of like the perfect song uh, for couples to kind of run into and that was kind of how it it, it kind of spread around the world since Hawaii is a, a sort of melting pot um, yeah it, it was it was really I don't really know what else to say about about it, but it's a catchy tune that I was feeling at the time and still do to this day. I, I hold it super dear. And yeah, it's just a love song. And I know uh, if you're if you're kind of like like me right now, uh, kind of by yourself on Valentine's Day, um, especially during the the pandemic, I, I'm sure we can all use a little magic um, in here. And I, I hope the song can can ha kind of give that to you or help you find the magic again. So, yeah, Abracadabra. I love it. And I'm and as I said before, I'm going to say again. I really, really, I'm looking at the numbers. I'm really impressed and and shocked for Valentine's Day. And I want to thank everyone for tuning in to not only hear the live music drop of Abracadabra. We're also going to be doing Follow Me by Rock and Well. Chris from Hawaii, uh, happy Valentine's Day to everyone out there. I really hope with the live music drop that we're going to be doing or drops, uh, it really brings a great inspired mood uh, to the day, to what you're going through, uh, to how you're feeling, to really add that warmth and that peace. And I heard birds or something in the background a little bit. Oh, was that coming from me? I think it was coming. Do you got birds or something in the background? Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> they're they're actually minor birds. They're, they're the the state bird, and they just love my AC unit. Uh huh. They 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 just love to just 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 fight on. There's birds fighting on my AC unit right now. <laughs> so they just sorry, come and this. perch on it, or what do they do? Yeah, I think they live there like rent free. I haven't really? asked them for money or anything. <laughs> like I just, I you know, I, 
I feel bad for them, so I let them live oh, there. <laughs> let them live there. Yeah. I love the sound of it. It's really we we just got done having over two feet of snow. We had three more inches oh a couple God. days ago. We had a little mini ice storm last night. We're supposed to have another ice snow storm, whatever you want to call it, tomorrow, which Whoa. I keep praying about. We don't. We're having a normal, normal, normal winter. And I've <laughs> only been back to the East Coast full time for the last two and a half years. Now, do I regret it? Absolutely not. But with all of the snow and we are down anywhere from 22, 21 degrees all the way down to nine degrees, the snow is not melting. It's all solid ice. And oh I keep dreaming of the 115 degree weather that I used to be in back in Vegas. And yeah. Oh my God. Dude, so I think snow is the greatest thing ever. Like coming from Hawaii. We don't get snow, you know, though. Mm. I've only seen snow twice in my life. Really, the only snow I, I see is in my freezer. Oh, so, God. It's, it's, <laughs> dude, I I love snow. <laughs> Every opportunity. Like, it's just so magical. It's it's just like like Disney magic yeah. to me. But, I mean, I'm sure, like, if you, if you get it all the time, then it's, like, not the best thing. But snow is everything to me. So, <laughs> Well, I, here's the thing. We have had, and I don't know if anyone's noticed this, we at least used to have years ago. I, I don't know if this is part of that global warming or what's going on, but I'm going to tell you seasons have changed. We have had, I can literally count specifically, three days of sun, sunshine in the last month and week. We have had overcast and cloudy days every day, all day long, snow or not, Every oh single day. Now, usually, <laughs> now I'm going to be very specific. The sun did peak out yesterday for less than a minute. And I mean, less than a minute it peaked out. Even today, clouds all day. We used to at least have some sort of sun in between, but it's so strange. It's almost like feeling like it's Washington State or maybe Seattle, something right now. Cloudy. <laughs> cloudy all fucking day long oh my god actually it's kind of been cloudy here too but not yeah. every day for the last month and week no <laughs> <laughs> i'm just trying to relate all right no i'm glad you're freaking are. sunny all the time here dude i'm sorry what is, i can't relate to that <laughs> what's the weather like right now besides the cloud what is the normal weather right now Honestly, it, it's been it's been sunny. Like people think it's strange because mm -hmm. we will have like rain, but it's also like hot sun, like it's warm rain. And I, I guess other people think it's strange. I kind of grew up with it, but it's like literally always sunny. The coldest it gets here is like like high 60s. It, it's, it's really that, yeah. High 60s is super cold to me. Like I have to wear like two sweaters, you know, two hoodies and yeah, I'm I'm sorry. <laughs> I do want to I do want to get out to like the East Coast one day and just kind of like experience seasons cuz in I'm going off on tangent, but like in elementary school they would read mm -hmm. us like the same like, the caterpillar book and like the seasons book and they'll talk about how beautiful fall is. I've never seen fall before. I've never seen trees turn orange and yellow before. What? So yeah, I've never experienced seasons, dude, my whole life. It, I've been sheltered on this beautiful island. But um, yeah, I, I, I need to go. I need to get out more, you know. And when once I have the music rolling, then and tour and stuff. Once I tour again, then I, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, get prepared. You're not gonna be packing shorts and tank tops and whatever else and <laughs> flip flops when you start touring, especially when you come here to the states. You get different seasons all year long, depending on where wherever you go. Dude, I'm the worst at packing. I'm like the most Hawaiian packer ever. Like I would literally only bring like three shirts with me, like anything that can fit on carry on. Uh -huh. Three shirts shorts i wear shorts on the on the airplane oh. and maybe like like two two more board shorts and i'll show up to like california in the middle of winter like that or i visited my my friend in minnesota and it was like fucking snowing oh my god i said the f word you're fine radiant. you're fine oh really yeah whoa <laughs> that's we're that's satellite crazy. baby not fm Hey, <laughs> <laughs> I said the effort. Said the <laughs> no, effort. So, yeah. 
so I yeah I show up in the snow and I like I'm the worst packer ever of uh, to some Hawaiian guy <laughs> Sorry. Alexa what's the weather Ice storm tomorrow. 35 degrees. So let me tell you, you can come here and I'll take the 60 degrees and the the uh, the birds outside by the air conditioner. <laughs> All right, we'll trade bodies. We'll trade positions. Hey, 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 Alexa, what what's the weather like, Chris? It's it's the same as it's always been. Oh, oh okay. thanks, Alexa. I appreciate. <laughs> I ask Alexa for about everything. Seriously, I was in D.C. for the Yahoo Finance photo shoot, and I kept finding myself when I was in a hotel room wanting to ask a question, and she wasn't there. I was thinking, shit, I should have brought my Alexa with me. I'm so used to, especially in during a pandemic. She's my voice of reasoning. So if I don't want to deal with something, or if I want a joke, or just simple conversation, I literally Alexa everything. Dude, that's like, like having like a mom mm -hmm. like at your beck and call at all times. Like I used to ask my mom before Google, mm -hmm. we used to mm -hmm. just like, I used to ask my mom anything. And like nowadays you can just know anything you want. Isn't that, that wild? You, you'll just never not know. Yeah. You can know literally anything you want. Crazy. Well, she does come in handy. I mean, scheduling, grocery list, reminders. I'm going to tell you, I love her help when it comes to reminders because I usually write down everything. I don't put any reminders in my phone. I actually, for the first time, no lie, uh, someone asked me to create a uh, Google or no, um, some type of email thing. So I remember what it was. It was for one of the interviews. I never in my life set up in Outlook or Gmail or anything. I never set up a appointment through that to for any, it was the first time I was thinking, oh shit, dude, how do I Google that? I don't want to look stupid. Right? How do I make this, this appointment here through the calendar? Um, but yeah, I was able to learn that without Alexis help. Very proud of myself, but I always <laughs> write down everything and I refuse. This is how I keep my memory intact. I refuse to be um, a, a slave or um, trapped to have my life in the cloud or on the phone. I think that's the worst, worst thing mm -hmm. to do. Um, and it creates just, it doesn't help with memory programming. So like I said, there are times I won't write down something and I'm going to tell you probably about 88 to 90%, if not more, I will take the chance of hoping to remember a dentist appointment, a radio interview, whatever it may be. I will put it in my memory bank and I will hope and believe and pray, no lie, that I will remember that appointment. I will refuse to write it down. And there's certain ones I will write down, but that's how I strengthen my memory. Mm -hmm. Wow. I struggle with that too. And actually super recently, I've been trying to practice that more, like not using iMessage and just like trusting yourself. I feel like we don't trust ourselves to remember stuff. And that's why we're losing our memory, dude. Like we don't even remember phone numbers anymore. Yeah. Oh, can you, I mean, there, what was it? Um, it reminds me of that movie with um, that McCarthy chick. She uh, she got lost and she couldn't find her phone. She left it at the guy's house and she uh, came across a couple, a couple dudes in the back of an alleyway and she asked if she could use the phone and the only number that she could remember was her ex who left her. Now, can you imagine... Oh not having God. your phone and you need help and you don't know one number and the only number was someone you would not even want to think of being a last person in a world to have to call. Oh my God. That is like the worst situation. Mm. I don't, I don't think I've seen this movie before. Actually dude, funny that you bring up memory. I, I like, I feel like I really, really struggle with this and it's funny the the animated series is kind of, based off of uh, the main character actually mo loses his, his memories. He gets his head chopped off for some reason, and uh, it's replaced with a, a, a pineapple. And he 
searches through the cosmos to kind of relearn like who he is and and find who who took his head basically and um he runs into other characters who who run into or who have memory problems and that's very fascinating that we're we're talking about this right now mm. it's so it's so close to me or maybe maybe i'm not thinking at all and we all have memory problems <laughs> Well, I'll tell you this. I, I'd rather not pop ginkgo biloba or pills or anything else. So whatever I can do to strengthen that, I will. It was Jenny McCarthy. It was, I don't recall. It's where she played a reporter. Mm. Uh, is, th is this like a recent movie? No, I think it's an older one. Let me oh, see here. So Jenny, I go and then if it's not Alexa, let me do Google. So Jenny McCarthy, uh, reporter. Let's see what pops up. Uh, reporter film. I think it's the, per is it the perfect you? I don't know. Is that it? Let's see. She was stunning in this film though. Absolutely oh, really? stunning. Yeah. Jenny. I, I don't know if that's. Now I really want to watch it. I don't think it's that. So where, what movie is it? So Jenny McCarthy, and then, uh, oh, who's that? Um, all right, so now I got to go to, wait a minute, here we go, X-Men cast, because I got the guy in my head. He plays this, I think it's Cyclops or whatever, so let's see here. Uh -huh. or the guy with the laser beams. Yeah, Cyclops. I th is it Cyclops, so where is it? Uh, he should be like the first one popping up. Why am I scrolling through that many people that fast? So let's see here. He's the one that lo uh, that's in love with. Here we go. James Mars Marsden. So let's see here. So Jenny McCarthy and James Marsden film. Walk of shame. That's it. Walk of shame. Walk of shame. Freaking, you've got to watch it, Chris. You're going to love it. It is hysterical. I mean, one of her best movies. Now, I say it's one of her best movies. Like, why the fuck didn't you know what the movie or film was? But it's Walk of Shame. You've got to watch it. It's, it's Walk hysterical. Of shame. Hysterical. It's like, it's like a rom-com. What does that mean? I mean, a, a romantic comedy. Is there like a romantic comedy sort of thing? Something like that. I would, um, yeah, I, you're going to have to tell me. I, <laughs> I look at it as a comedy. I, I really would like to know your opinion. And the next time you come back on, hoping that yeah. you've had seen it, let me know. It's, um, I would just say it's a Jenny McCarthy film. That's the best way I can put it. It's just that uh, you're, when you watch it, you know that that's a Jenny McCarthy film. Mm, I see. I I am Googling who Jenny McCarthy is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> She's related to, uh, what is it? Uh, the Beatles. I think she, memory serves me correct. Uh, Melissa McCarthy. I don't know if that's her cousin or what, but I believe our relatives. Yeah. Jenny McCarthy is Melissa McCarthy's cousin. You know who mm -hmm. Melissa McCarthy is, right? She's the heavier set one. Um, she was in a movie, Heat, Bridesmaid, Spies, The Boss, Tammy. I am so bad with movies. Here in Hawaii, we we only had three DVDs on the island, and what? everybody shared it. And oh. the the three the three movies we had here are are Fifty First Dates, Hitch, and um. The one where he's like, I made fire, where he's like trapped on a, an island. <laughs> oh, a castaway? Yeah. With uh, Tom Hanks? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got to get your ass over here to the stage. <laughs> I need to experience life. Uh, no, well, you, well, here's the thing it's paying off with the music. We're going to go and do a live radio drop right now of Abracadabra. Before I hey. do that, I want to give a quick shout out to Angel Cintron and Steve Nava. If you don't know who they are, they are with Sinava Photography. Angel uh, and Steve are two of the most highly sought after photographers in today's fashion industry, collectively known as Sinava. 
They are prized for their highly produced editorial images that are creative, edgy, artistic, and fresh, and often drawn from their own environment. People, locations, lighting, and colors, wardrobe, combine them all to develop a story that is told within a single image. And more specifically, that's how they do it. And they're very, very excellent at doing that. For So once again, people, locations, lighting, colors, and wardrobe, they combine them all to develop a story that is told within a single image. They are highly world-renowned, published photographers, magazine covers, project hopefully is going to be coming through. We're supposed to be uh, getting all together on the 27th of this month. My good friend JT Hassel from the New York Jets uh, supposed to be happening. Uh, he's going to be doing a live interview with me for a uh, book drop. He recently came out with a book uh, for Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. This photo shoot is going to help with not only the promotion of that and Sanava Photography and everything that they're doing and bringing to the table, which is top notch, but also for an online article on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. And I'm looking forward to seeing everyone February 27th, Saturday for this project. Actually, we're supposed to be getting in on the 26th. So we're just finally or finishing up to finalize certain things. Um, and it's always uh, with the talent because you never know where things can go. But we are very, uh, very positive that that photo shoot on February 27th and video shoot because Angel and Steve are, you know, you're not going to get anything cheap or less with them. You know, they're bringing in the top level network style content from photography and videography, um, especially when it comes to styling. So I wanted to get that plug in and um, that shout out to Angel Sintron and Steve Nava with, um, with Sinava Photography. And uh, look forward to more continued partnerships and working together now and in the future. With that being said, uh, thank you, uh, Angel and Steve. And now, Chris, are you ready for the official no interruption drop music live airplay of Abracadabra on Valentine's Day? Let's do it, Stephen Cuoco. All right, here we go. Abracadabra by... The one, the only, rock and well. <laughs>
<laughs> I heard that. <laughs> Dude, oh. you got me way too stoked, man. Oh, I'm proud of you. I'm serious. I don't, I, I say that often, but I say it because it has to be said because I have the opportunity and am absolutely blessed to interview incredible people from all around the world to help you guys to have a stage to do what we are doing because you deserve it and it's uncensored wow dude you're you're such an amazing catalyst and i'm i feel so grateful right now to to be doing this man like you're so accomplished and this is such a great platform what you're doing and such an inspiration to me thanks steven you deserve it. I actually, ha I actually had a question. Like, you've done so much, right? So, like, where are you? What, what are like your big goals that you have? Like, what is a big goal that you're kind of striving for? Like a big life goal. You ever think about that? My big life goal, to make it simply put, or to simply put, is. I know why I'm here on this earth. I know why I'm here. It's to do what I'm doing. It's to help go in a different direction, to not follow old programs and mm -hmm. ways of doing business uh, and limitations uh, to, to really just be who I am, which is not a problem. Sometimes I, I do a lot of praying. I check in a lot with my mental health because, you know, you go on social media, you look at the news and it's the same old thing over and over again. And yep. there are times I have conversations with the Lord and I'm like, look at the gifts you've given me. Look at what I'm doing. Look at what I'm able to do. Look at what I've worked hard and, and not just financial investment, but even myself to do as a public relations representative to break through a lot of barriers and a lot of things that are taboo, uh, you know, to help people not be limited. You know, most companies and most businesses want to either control you guys or, um, or to limit you guys or to take ownership of your copyright, your intellectual property. They treat you like you're a real estate property. And granted, everything's an investment, but people are not things. People are people. And, you know, I work real hard and, and with working hard and with the integrity and ethics and values that I have. And, you know, it's great if someone can make six, seven figures on doing some dance on TikTok. But I'm thinking... You know what? Why should, you know, I do my, my best not to question is I don't know people's lives, but let me tell you something. If someone is willing to pay me seven figures for helping them to be empowered and to not be someone's bitch and to be able to get guaranteed results, whether personal, professional, all the above, to be able to have connections and make connections with people. I should be getting seven plus and I'm going to say it because I'm being honest. I, I don't see the fucking logic in paying someone for some stupid dance on TikTok or wherever millions of dollars for what? I mean, it's, it's just, my frustration is, is if there's going to be, um, you know, areas that's considered entertainment or endorsements or publicity or marketing or influence, that's fine. But a lot, I don't know if you saw the recent movie, but a lot of this stuff is just fucking fake. There's no personality. There's no character. It doesn't promote relationships. It doesn't promote uh, a legacy. It's just, oh, I'm got to take a shit. Let me go take my phone and take a shit because I know I'm going to have a big fart after that shit and I'm going to get a lot of responses because there's nothing else better to do but to take a shit and fart and everyone's going to love it. That's the world that we live in. People pay attention to things that I just see as something that is a quick laugh Mm -hmm. But I don't like I watch. This is why I created Power 98.5 is because there's too many artists out there, Chris, like yourself, that you guys can't get a platform. You can't be seen. No one wants to hear you. No one wants to talk to you unless either you paid the pay per play 
or you're with a solid label. I have had every single radio station that's owned by top media companies that have said to me and my clients, we cannot play your music because you're either not signed to a major record label or because we consider advertising. Why don't you talk to our advertising department? Why don't you talk to our marketing department? And it's like our responsibility, even myself, when I did my one report, um, Sound Exchange came back and they were wondering like why I was playing music um, that I never played before. I said, that's the responsibility of a, a radio station is to support all music artists, upcoming, emerging, and current. I'm not going to continue to play the same music for six months mm -hmm. in rotation with nothing fresh and brand new. I'm going to stick with the trends. I have an A&R team, arts and repertoire. I act as my own A&R, and I want to make sure that I find the best and have the best um, because... Yes, I believe everyone deserves a platform. I'm going to close very soon and hand you over to Mike. I believe everyone deserves a platform. However, there is a level um, of care that has to go into it. And when it comes to producing, sound, you know, sound can make or break, Chris. You know this very well as a producer. So I want to make sure that I do my best to share the best and give the best in what I believe in, but also to honor and support those, whether they have a budget or not, because I'm not in the whole pay per play BS. And just sometimes I'm just human and I get frustrated. And I wonder why, cause I'm not, you know, young, you know, I'm going to be, mm -hmm. I'm going to be 47 in this April. And when you get older, time is not on your side. It is, but we do things differently as you get older than when you're younger. And I feel like I'm Gen X with the millennial young mindset, but at the same time, the world does see you differently. So, you know, it's not like someone my age who's been independent and I've had my own independence for so long can easily go out there and get a job if I need one. You know, during this pandemic, I'm I'm thankful for my clients. I'm thankful for the opportunities and the savings that I put away. But I'm still a licensed dental radiologist and dental assistant. I can't even go back into dentistry because of this pandemic because of what have happened. So I've kept my license this whole entire time. And I can't even get a job back in dentistry, whether I wanted to do something where I can use my license, whether it be New York, New Jersey, or Pennsylvania. And I hear you're overqualified. Well, anyone who says you're overqualified is two reasons. Either they're telling you you're fucking old or they're telling you that you really are overqualified. And for the most part, when I hear that, it usually means that I am, which I am, but at the same time, especially in dentistry, there is no such thing as being overqualified. There is no such thing as being too young or too old. So that, to be transparent, I hope that helps you. Um, you know, once again, I'm learning how to be more vulnerable with myself because in public relations, we are to keep an image, reputation, management perspective, even with ourselves. And transparency isn't always accepted from a public relations rep. Um, we are to paint a picture. We are to help control the narrative like the media and to tell people what to think and how to think, not giving them options. Um, I do both, but I try to stay in a place to where I advise my clients and I also advise and delegate myself to not control and manipulate the narrative to just come out and just be fucking real. And I've always been like that, but I've gone through in the last two years, Chris, I've gone mm -hmm. through these changes to break through the barriers and not do what the norm is in PR and putting on a fairy airy Walt Disney motherfucking bullshit tale story <laughs> And lead you to believe it when it's not real, like people who take toilet bowl seats and put it up to a background and act like they're on a motherfucking plane. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna take that that last sentence and I'm gonna use it as inspiration for my next animation. Do it Thank because you. a lot of uh, <laughs> I, what was it? Um, there is a 
new movie that came out. It's absolutely brilliant. And of course, dear Lord Jesus, come around. Something's lost, must be found. This I ask and pray will be. Please restore my memory. What is that new? Uh, let's see. I think is, was it was on Netflix. Um, so H, let's see, Netflix. Oh, no, wait. I Let me see here. I think I have it here. I got, you got to watch this. This is so true. It was absolutely incredible when I watched it. All right. Where is it? Is it on? Uh, it's about social media. It just came out. It's brand new. Um, I'm going to see. Let's see. Netflix new releases. I actually it- saw it on HBO. Um, is it that that social media one? Is it that? Uh, let's see. Mm-hmm. HBO new releases. Let's see here. If you understand or know what it is, you probably would. I can't. I, I not that I can't. I don't recall. It was just on, and it went over the whole influencer thing. It showed exactly what all the influencers are doing. It it, it showed Is improved. It the social time. dilemma. It's that one, but there's a new one that's out. What the heck is that called? Uh, let's see. I just watched it. It was talking about how Kim Kardashian and all those have all these, like the majority of their followers are fake. It's showing um, how people, influencers are scheming and scamming to get products and the images that they're using, how they're renting out jets, renting out multi-million dollar houses, renting out multi-million hundreds of thousands of dollars of cars to create this image to get free stuff, paid free vacations and all that stuff. Oh my God. It, I just watched it. It's a 2021 new release. Um, social uh, media new film. I'll figure it out. Let me see here. It's not, Social Dilemma is one, but this one goes really, really deep where this guy took three people and wanted to turn them into influencers and showed the process of how influencers are building these platforms and what how they strategically do everything from video to photo shoots to you know using wow. creating like spot like you've got to watch this i just okay. where the heck but i've got to get you the name and i'm not going to go without not giving you the name <laughs> thanks man thanks for going through the trouble so how how i understand it the social dilemma is kind of like explaining the board game, right? The, the broader sense of it. And this is kind of like this TV show that you're telling me about is like how to play the game. The new exactly. the new movie, yeah. It shows exactly everything. Um, let me see. Actually, you know what? Real quick. Let's just do this real quick. I'm not going to stay too long. Let's go to Redbox new releases. All right. There you go. You can play something while while I'm looking. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> Got you, man. Forget it. We're going to have to come back to it. You can keep playing live. I don't mind. But when I find out, I'll let you know. (laughs) All right. Um, Um, We're going to do another live drop. Uh, Follow me. Is there anything that you want to include of the process of of what goes into your music production, your producing, the creativity, and what do we have to look forward to? So... Um, let, let's break that down. So the follow me thing, uh, I was kind of working on a cover album. I never wanted to be like, I was scared to release any covers because I didn't want to be labeled as a cover artist, okay. but, uh, it was, it was follow me and, uh, girl, put your records, records, records. And I made these two songs 
and uh, I and I made a few of them actually, and uh, it was kind of inspired by another local artist out here that I worked with. His name is Fiji, uh, and I had an inter. I, I was in the studio with him, and the first album he ever put out was called Born and Raised, mm -hmm. and uh, I listened to this album like religiously as a kid, and they were all cover songs, and um, I met him like 20 years later. And I was like, so why did you name it Born and Raised? And he was like, because those are the songs I was born and raised on. And it like blew my mind. I was like, oh my God. So with that idea, I wanted to to kind of release songs that like I grew up on too. And sort of my spin. So Follow Me by Uncle Cracker, um, uh, the, the record song and, and so many other ones I, I wanted to just kind of put my own mix on. But yeah, dude, I'm sitting. I'm sitting on so much music right now, and I'm just kind of waiting for the right visuals to to be done. I know we talked about like strategy before this, and you're like, just put it out, which like, I probably should, huh? Maybe I'll even drop a song right now, um, on your your live radio show. Why not? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know what? I'm gonna do that. Why don't we do that? A live drop. So, you know the the song that's on the the promotional video. Uh, that one's called Coffee, and um, we can talk about it afterwards, but I think I'm going to drop it right now. <laughs> Do it. I I'm feeling inspired. But, yeah, uh, uh, about the process, um, it's it's super random, man. A lot of, a lot of the stuff uh, happens in my head first, and then I just kind of know how know the language and know how to speak to the computer to kind of put it out into uh real life which is it's honestly like a, a gift that i'm so thankful for and not a lot of people can do that uh with precision mm -hmm. but yeah uh it, it usually starts in my head while i'm washing the dishes uh in the shower random it's usually when i'm away from the laptop uh, or any screen at all and then put it on. Yeah. <laughs> well, good. I think what it was is that break in between and having you pick up, uh, that wasn't a guitar. What was that that you were playing while I was trying to find that film real quick? This is the guitar. And oh, her, her name is Jasmine. Um, okay. Yeah, Jasmine's my, 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 one of my best friends, other than you, oh. Steve. Yeah. <laughs> Well, see that, see how it worked. If it wasn't for me being very ambitious to get you that that name of that film, you wouldn't have been inspired to do something live. So go ahead. What do you got for us? Oh yeah. Oh. Um. Dang, I didn't think I was gonna sing live, but um, this one's uh one I'm working on. So the character inside of the animated film I'm working on is going to to meet this really lonely um uh, li little sad drunk character um he's gonna walk through portal and kind of meet him and they're gonna end up making music and they're gonna make a band called mr color um, so this is an anim uh, a road eye song for that animated band and uh this one's called whiskey stains i hope it speaks for itself let me check if it's tuned. <laughs> She's always on time, waiting on me. She's always there for me, like whiskey stain. Oh, I love it when she's around, waiting on me. She's a guarantee, like what you know about Jackie sitting on a shelf. What you know about drinking by yourself? What you know about drinking with no one to share? It's getting hard for me. What you know about me? 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 
Girl, you better recognize. Let me those pretty eyes. You might wanna let your girls know that we don't ever fall the flow like whiskey stains, stains, stains. Boy, I love it when she's around, waiting on me. She's a guarantee. Like what you know about Jackie sitting on the step? What you know about drinking by yourself? What you know about drinking with no new shit? Getting hot for me. What you know about me? Me. Me. Now, all those who are out there, all by themselves, it's okay. We'll always be here, Stephen and I. Sure will. So what you know about Jackie's shelf? What you know about drinking by yourself? What you know about drinking when no one can shake? Sitting hard for me. What you know about me? Me. Me. What you know about What you know about What you know about What you know about it? <laughs> I like that. I really, really like that. Someone just made a comment that they really like your music. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that one's called Whiskey Stains. I I, I wrote it with my with my older brother, mm-hmm. and he's gonna he's gonna voice act uh, that character. Um, and yeah, Whiskey Stains. If anybody uh, likes any of these songs, I do have demo versions of them, and I'm super open to uh, sending you a private, super secret link uh, so you can listen to it at yeah. home. And give me some feedback. So hit my DMs, and I'll send it to you. Hmm. There you go. And to let you know, God is great. When I put that prayer out there, it, it gets answered. It's called Fake Famous. Fake Fake Famous. Famous. You've got to watch it, Chris. Fake, Fake famous. famous. I'm ready it to just right now. came out. Fake famous. Fake famous. It goes into every detail of what influencers are doing, how they get the brands, how they get the products, how they get paid, how they get the money, the little tricks and things, and even uh, using bot services and stuff. Like it is, I, I, it's actually better than Social Dilemma, to be quite honest. Wow, that's saying something. Okay, I'm I'm gonna watch it like right after this. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. And if you don't have it on the list, I'm telling you to. As my parents always said, be forewarned is to be forearmed. Know what's going on because there's too much jealousy out there. Um, too much yeah. people are like comparing themselves, and you really can't because you have no idea what they're doing to get to where they are at. Yeah. Dude, I, I, I'm such an emotional person and like, I, I think about this all the time and it's, it's the, the generation after us, dude, like the kids that will never know what it's not like to have a phone. Mm-hmm. They will always have a phone and always have that pressure. We just kind of came into this pressure. They're going to be born with that pressure their whole lives to, and compare themselves and Holy shit, dude. Like sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll like, t- when you turn off your music and like turn off the screens and everything and you just kind of think, mm-hmm. this is one of the things that I, I, I truly think about. And like, if I ever do decide to have kids one day, like I am I am like genuinely scared for them. Uh, that's that's such a, a crazy thing to, 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 to be born with is like this huge amount of pressure to be, uh, to be beautiful and all the time and to be this elevated version that you think you need to be 
and 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 yeah um i i i hope i hope people kind of like understand that that they are their kids the children are going gonna go through that whether they like it or not and kind of help them through it before they they leave this earth so i'm gonna let you know to bring a peace of mind and my heart just told me or inspired me to tell you this you have nothing to worry about when a time is right, Chris, and you choose to have children and it's meant to be and meant to happen, they will be protected and they will be safe. Because one of the one of the most important things to understand is the worst thing, and it's it can be difficult at times to to consider this, is to try to stop someone from learning what they're meant to learn. We don't want anyone to get hurt or experience pain or rejection or bullying or anything. And I'm not saying it's something that should happen, but we don't know what's in God's plan, the universe's plan, what's in someone's karma. Whatever it is you believe in, we can only do so much. But at the same time, you know, if someone is going down a certain path, we can advise, but really it's like a scenario and it goes back to my best friend. Um, I remember, you know, her mom saying that the more she tried to help her daughter to realize the bad relationships that she was in to get her out, the stronger she became and more devoted she became to that bad relationship. Mm. Does that help? It makes sense. That that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was definitely I, I grew up a Mormon kid actually. Um so uh it, there's kind of like this thing where like yeah we definitely like grow up like you can't even drink coffee. You you're like not allowed to drink certain like sodas and and they they do everything they can to like uh learn learn things the hard way mm -hmm. and you wow you 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 just changed my mind dude like yeah I, i'm actually excited for for them to to learn and i actually think now after you said that they're they're going to be way better than us at, at dealing with that sort of thing so Absolutely. wow perspective changed dude <laughs> it's it's okay and and just Just know what is meant to be will be and what is meant to you're going to be placed in positions and people to help them just like with you to guide and give insight without taking control and ownership and mm -hmm. look how look how in energetically of what that did for you. That's what we are to do now if you see someone getting kidnapped step in you know you don't, yeah. you know <laughs> but there are certain things that do have to run its course unfortunately so yeah definitely i but. i've got to um to add into that and if you have anything additional to share or not please do so um Two questions. Um, Steve from San Francisco would like to know, one, what is your last name? And number two, where can they buy your music? My last name is Pineapple. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, uh, soon to be uh, Rock and Well, but my, my, my original uh, birth name, actually my full name is actually Christian Sylvester Kamakano Kalelo of Blasco Alesia. That's like my whole Hawaiian name wow. included. Yeah. Uh, but Christian Aloysio was, uh, is what, what you'll find. And no, I won't give you my social security number. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <Chris>. <laughs> but you can give him information of where to buy your music. But, but you can, yeah, you can find my music on any platform out there. You can, um, uh, spotify apple music the youtube red thing uh and it's under uh rock and well so r-o-c-k-e-m-w-e-l-l -L. Awesome. um if you have a hard time finding it i uh, i can send you links uh in the dms of my instagram and, and your instagram is rock and well tv yes rock and well tv uh funny thing the rock and well it's uh I, I think I made it up when I was in like middle school and, and like, I, I didn't like it for a while, mm -hmm. uh, as a DJ, but it just kind of like stuck, you know, and then you're just like rock and well forever. So 
go. Keep rocking them well. <laughs> Thank you. I'm Steve. glad I did it. Thank you, Steve, for the question. I hope that helps. And we're going to go ahead and I'm going to do a live drop of follow me. How about that? Let's do it. You're going to love this one, Steve. So surreal, man. You have no idea. <laughs> you deserve it. It's perfect timing. And to everyone who is tuning in, Chris and I met on Clubhouse. Yes, dude. Clubhouse is the most <laughs> amazing app. It like, is. I've been pacing myself with it. It's becoming a little bit redundant, but I go back on yeah. to continue to find people like you. Huh. I definitely know a bunch of artists that, that would love the opportunity uh to come on here send him my way yeah seriously you have my permission have him get a hold of me you've got my info perfect all right i'm gonna do it well on that note we are going to go ahead do we have it ready all right good ready we're gonna be closing on out we got our close out music going on I want to thank everyone for tuning in to Live On Air with Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. Please download the iOS or Android app. Uh, my special guest today is Chris Pineapple, better known as Rock'em Well. We just did a live drop of Abracadabra. Happy Valentine's Day to you all. Um, and actually, let's go ahead and we're going to, let's let's do the Abracadabra for closeout music. Bring that Let's back up. Let's bring that back up. Yeah. Anybody who's listening, feel free to stand up and uh, find a buddy, even if you're by yourself. Just dance to it. Thanks for coming. Aloha. Uh, who would you like to give a shout out to, Chris? Uh, mom and dad. <laughs> uh, shout out to you, Stephen. Oh, uh, you. Shout out to my buddies on Clubhouse. Uh, Sousa, Matt. Kathleen, everybody who's helped me prepare for this interview. Uh, I love you guys. Thank you guys so much. 
And what I like to do also is to let everyone know I do plan on creating a playlist segment on Power 98.5 uh, of the best DJs in music. Chris, I really hope you publish a lot more music at your discretion when you feel ready. But now is the time because people are not distracted by traffic, subways, metros, uh, mm -hmm. jobs, their homes. So even in the middle, you know, you know, I was told by a couple of customer service people and I hear they got music playing in the background. If you're calling certain companies I've heard, I'm like, what are you playing? Like, oh, well, I've got my Spotify playing or I've got, you know, my, you know, uh, some type of track playing, whatever like system that they're using. Either they have another phone or they're using something else. So this is the perfect time. And also, you know, it's been speculated, Chris, that touring, um, it's starting to happen drive-ins here in the States. I'm not too sure about in, um, in yours in Hawaii, but uh, this is the time to really... You never know, remember this, you never know when your song is going to be most important in someone's life. And remember, even if a song is 10 years old, if they've never heard it before, Chris, and they hear it for the first time, it's just as brand new to them as if it came out in 2021. So your music will always be relevant. You have quite a few good tracks. All your tracks are great, but it's time to build on that. And I really want to highlight and get you on a solid playlist i definitely definitely want to add follow me which i'm going to go ahead and write that down add follow me to playlist i'm going to uh to add that into there because that's your most current one right now we are listening to abracadabra for valentine's day this is a valentine's day special also i want to give a big shout out to sanava sanava photography angel Sinchan, and steve nava who are the most incredible and two of the top and highest sought after photographers in today's fashion industry and they will be merging in uh music and film is something that i did share with them and uh, they can be found at sinavaphotography.com, C-I-N-A-V-A photography.com. Their Instagram is sinava underscore photography. And for all those who are serious about getting incredible, incredible production of video and photography, you can contact them directly at area code 415 845 Three four four two. Once again, four one five eight four five three four four two. Angel or Steve, you want to work with these guys, and soon, Chris. Hopefully, mm -hmm. you'll be working with them when you get your ass over here in the states. I guarantee they're going to want to <laughs> photograph you too. <laughs> Definitely, man. Um, one more thing. Um, as a gift, uh, I have a connection to to Dole the fruit company and uh i wanted to send you a pineapple so uh really send me address yeah send me address <laughs> to the studio and i'm gonna send you a pineapple dude okay <laughs> as a gift for having me on here thank you so much you're well, actually and uh, what i'm gonna do because we're listening to your track right now i'm going to go into instagram i'm gonna find you and i'm gonna send you my address and info right now Hey, live. Live. He's typing, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Yes, I am. There you go. It's official. It's official. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for having me on, man. This, this has been so fun. You're welcome. Hold the line, Chris. We're going to finish playing out the song Abracadabra. Happy Valentine's Day to everyone. Thank you for joining the one, the only, all the way from Hawaii, Rock and Well, a.k.a. Chris Pineapple. And you're listening to Abracadabra. <laughs> Love, come
Awesome, 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 Chris. Hey, thank you, man. You're welcome, my friend. How do you feel? Yep. I feel I feel great, man. I, yeah, I had I had the worst sleep of my life, and I literally like like for like all of yesterday, I, I was just like messaging my friends, and all my friends were like uh, on Clubhouse. We were like making fake interviews, and they even like felt we we held like a fake. Um, not, it was a real room, but like people were like practice interviewing me and everything. It was uh, been a crazy uh, couple of days. I, 